Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another installment of What Would Kelly Make? Among the parcels that were sent to me this time around I decided I was going to work with Elfie Selfie stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn. I thought these were super cute and that they would be fun to pair with this Copic bubble background which is really really easy to do. Um, so here's the stamps and the dies before I even started using any of them so they're nice and clean. And then um, in order to kind of like set the scene, I'm going to be using a T-square ruler and a pencil to just lightly draw some ground so I know where to stamp my images, um, just so everything kind of makes sense. I am going to be stamping all of them with intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp. That's because it is Copic safe and we are going to be doing lots of Copic coloring here. So I'm going to stamp that down just slightly lower than that line. I want to make sure I have plenty of room to kind of stack my characters up. This, I'm not masking them because I'm going to be die cutting the images out. I'm only stamping them here so that A, I can get a look at how my layout's going to be and B, I need to see how far up I need to take my color. I don't want to leave, um, I don't want to fade it to white too soon. So I stamped all the little characters and I'm going to go ahead and give each of them a balloon since this is going to be a, a birthday party um, card. So this one balloon, uh, I didn't want it to be right in that little mouse's face. So I stamped it kind of off, um, off to the right hand side and then the one off his tail I stamped kind of off to the left. So now we're just going to get right into the technique. Basically, this technique is so simple, you cannot mess it up, and it really gives kind of just a fun little look to the background. You can do this with any of the colors. I'm going to be doing kind of a rainbow gradient, just because I love rainbows. Like, they just make me happy. So I'm starting with my darkest color, and then I'm going to consecutively get lighter till it fades to white on the top. And I'm doing, I don't know, maybe like a one inch section or so for each of the colors. Uh, for my yellow greens, I actually, my lightest color is going to be the same color as I used the lightest color for the yellow, um, because once you get to those lighter tones, you really can't even tell the difference, and I don't have a yellow green that is that light. So I'm just doing the same thing, going over it. I'm not worried too much at this point about blending the colors into each other, as far as the yellow and the green are concerned. Um, I will do that afterward. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that now that I've got my base layer on. Um, and I'm just going to slightly overlap them. When you're, if you watched the What Would Kelly Make where we colored the chameleons, we talked about blending different colored families. Uh, if you haven't watched that, I would totally encourage you to do so. Um, but basically when I'm picking my colors, I'm picking them so that they are close to each other. So I'm blending a B04 into a YG03. That last number is the one that you want to concentrate on because that last number is um, the one that's going to matter. The first one doesn't matter so much because that just talks about how bright or um, how gray it is. That part doesn't really necessarily matter when blending the colors. So I'm working super quickly here. This is barely... Um, this this is not real time. I think it's twice the amount of time it took me to do it. But... Um, yeah, just really super simple. And even this background, like even just the rainbow by itself is kind of fun and party like for the violet. I starting with my lightest color just to kind of sat saturate the paper because the VO4 is so strong. And then the next closest one to that is um, the like the VO1 is the, my next closest one. Um, and there is a drastic difference between the two colors. But by pre-saturating the paper, it can already start to blend together. And then I'm going to go back in with the blue and blend in the blue um, with the green and the violet. And just like I said, kind of slightly overlapping them. Um, not really working too hard because the colors are pretty similar. The last color that I am going to do is going to be um, kind of like a hot pink. So the RVs. And you can see how, even though I gave myself that line, um, they're <laughs> they're kind of bleeding below that and that's just because I'm putting down so uh, much ink so that they are blending properly they're bleeding out and it's fine because we're doing a colorless blender technique and so I've already have that thing handy to fix any of my mistakes so here with the um, RV04 is um, a really bright color but the RVs are very interesting because when you put them on top of each other when you put an RV02 on top of an RV04 um, it really lightens up the color. 
So now that all of the, the base colors are down, we're gonna start in with the technique. So you wanna make sure that you uh, fill your colorless blender marker. You don't wanna go in with a dry one. Uh, any Using any of your markers while they're dry will ruin your nib because then you have to really like scrub at the paper. You don't wanna do that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a series of medium sized circles. Basically just to kind of get a pattern going. Um, there again is not a right or a wrong way to do this. Once um, I have them down, some of them I'm going to go back in and I'm going to go over. If you do it one time and they're not light enough for you, go over them again. The way the colorless blender works is it does not erase the ink. It pushes it out to the edges. So you'll start to see on some of these how we get some darker edges. That's because that's where that ink is pooling. But you can keep going over that until it's as white or as light as you would like it to be. This technique does show up better in darker colors. That doesn't mean that it won't show up on lighter colors at all. Obviously, you can see over here on the yellow, um, it is showing up and it's kind of a gradation as it moves up. So I went through and I did some smaller ones and now I'm gonna go in and do some much bigger ones. Now you might be asking yourself, Kelly, why didn't you do the much bigger ones in the beginning? The reason why is because this is what starts to give it that really layered look and kind of fun like party lights on the wall um, is when you start pushing out you do the bigger circles and it starts pushing out the color into the other circles you already have there and it starts to look very layered uh, which is awesome this is if you watch the technique video um, you know this looks super cool if you're doing um, like uh, water cards, anything like beach scenes, underwater scenes, this looks awesome. If you're doing scenes where you're having light that's um, coming through like trees, this will mimic that look of um, those light spots. It's just really kind of fun and it, it really can match anything that you want. I like to use it for a little party theme. So here I'm using my colors blender, which is what it's intended for, to fix my boo-boos. So when you're using this, you want to make sure you're pushing the color toward where you want it to be. In between applications, let it dry. Don't just keep scrubbing at it. Let it dry for a few seconds and then go back in and do it again. So now that that colorful background and the technique is done, I'm going to go in and give myself some ground. Now you'll notice when I did the colorless blender and I was fixing my border, it was not perfect. It's okay, it doesn't have to be because I'm going to be using these gray markers and it's mostly going to cover it up and nobody's ever going to know that I made the boo-boo. The other thing that you'll notice while I'm doing this background is my markers are not full. It's a very streaky background. Uh, they're not blending greats. This is because I haven't filled, refilled my markers. So if you see this happening to you, if you see um, you get the streaking when you do a stripe of color, you get uh, your nib looks white, uh, you need to refill your marker. And if you continue to try to use it, you, you're risking ruining your nib. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see it's turning white and I'm like, I got to I got to stop. I have to stop and refill it. So I did. And now here you can see how much darker that is just by refilling um, the Copics. So then I'm going to finish it off with the lightest color of the C1 to kind of blend everything together. While I was going over everything multiple times, I lost a lot of the shading underneath my elephant. So I'm going to go back in and add that. So I'm going to start back in with that C5. It would be darkest under where um, he's standing or she's standing, whichever. Um, and then blend out this to the C3 and then to the C1 again. The background is now complete. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to work on the actual image coloring. I'm using the same C's. Uh, the only thing I'm doing is adding a C7 to color my elephants. Um, I just, there's something really fun about uh, having a lot of neutrals with like kind of a pop of rainbow color because then you really see that rainbow. It really stands out. And because we've done that kind of fun little bubble technique on the background, it's really going to be something interesting for people to look at when they look at the card. So for the shading, I colored in the entire elephant with the C1 minus the inside of his ear going in with the C3 and adding some shading on the underneath of his face. I tend to color as if my light source is in the top right hand corner. So that's how I will be doing my shadows. I colored his back leg completely with the C3. Anything darker automatically falls behind. So by adding that shading to the leg that's uh, in the back, it will make it look like it's in the back. I did leave some lighter highlights on his trunk, on the top of his head, and then on the front of his legs. 
adding the darkest shading to the base of his legs, to the legs that are behind, underneath his um, head and underneath his chin and the bottom of his trunk. So when I go in with the C7, those are the areas that I'm going to be concentrating on um, because I want them to look like they're the darkest. Then we're going to go back from the C7 blending back out. I didn't even bother doing the C5 again because I barely added any C7, so it just wasn't necessary. And I get very apprehensive when I'm coloring anything I'm gonna be cutting out with dyes that the ink was gonna bleed outside of the lines. Uh, if that happens to you, you can totally clean it up. Again, colorless blender to save the day. Um, or if you have a really hard color like a red and it's hard to get up with the colorless blender, you can um, outline it with a white gel pen and nobody will know the difference. To add a little bit of pink to their ears, I'm using that same RV00 I used in the background so everything matches. I colored my little elephant the same way as I colored uh, my large elephant. And then for my little mouse, I wanted him to be white. So I'm still using the same colors. He's, they're still all neutrals, all these cool grays. But instead of adding tons of shading, I'm only adding in the shadows. So the ear that's in the back would be darkest, the leg that's behind would be darkest, there would be some shading where his back leg is up against his front leg, and then there would be some shading kind of underneath his chin. There's just a little teeny tiny line. Um, and this you just want to be very light-handed. Anything that is white when you're coloring something white, you do want to leave white in the object. So again, adding that little pink ear, so you know they all look the same. And then I'm gonna move on to coloring the balloons. I only used three of them. I'm gonna show you the coloring of one. The other two I've used the same colors that I've already showed you. So I left myself a little uh, half moon highlight on the right hand side. And then I'm gonna be adding some shading on the left, not all the way to the edge, um, just a little sliver of lighter color, so that would be some reflective light. And then adding just a little bit of darker shading where it would be gathered at the base of the balloon blending that all back out with the lightest color, leaving that little sliver. So now that they're all colored, I'm gonna go in with a white gel pen and just reinforce that highlight. Um, so it's not something that you have to do, it's just something that I prefer to do. And this, again, is something that I prefer to do. I would recommend if you're going to outline your images to do it before you die cut them or you're gonna be chasing those little guys all over your desk trying to outline them. Uh, I use a Copic Safe pen just in case I have to go back and make any um, corrections or anything, but you, if you're done Copa coloring, you can use anything you have. I laid the dies out, I ran it through my Big Shot, and now I'm going to line up, now that I have everything die cut, I'm going to line up the little characters, because I don't like that white border in between each character. I just, I want it to look like one flush image. I'm fine with the white outline on the edges, but where they're sitting on top of each other, I want them to be sitting on top of each other. So I'm lighting them all up, and then I'm just gonna trim off the bottom with my scissors where they're gonna sit on the animal below. So just, um, you know, for some of them, like this one, the little uh, back leg sticks up that's not sitting on top of the other elephant, I'm gonna leave the white border there. The other thing I'm gonna do is because of the way that I stamped the balloon, I want this uh, elephant to look like he's holding it. So I'm gonna use my craft knife to cut a little slit in his um, trunk so that I can slide the balloon in. Before I do any adhering of anything to my card, I am going to stamp my sentiment because I intend on popping them up with foam tape and I don't want that to get away in my stamping. I stamped the sentiment in um, Black Simon Says Ink and then we are going to start adding some scotch foam tape and pop these little cutie pies up over their rainbow background. So I just, it's, I just think that it is. Like I said before, I think it's super fun to have that huge pop of color in the background and then all of these neutrals in the front so that that background really stands out. Um, I continued adding these with the Scotch foam tape. Here I'm just sliding that balloon into the trunk. Uh, I did put a little bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of it um, so that it would hold. Once everything was in place, I got that clear one Costella because you know we are all about that shimmer and added it to some of the dots in the background. I also added it to the balloons. And then um, this is just something kind of new and fun that I've been using. This is um, Crystal Glaze by Nuvo. And before I put the dots down, I usually wipe off some because sometimes there's like a little bubble in them. But basically you can use this like you would use sequins or uh, clear droplets or anything like that to kind of accent your um, 
sentiment and I think it would be cool to like put them in the bubbles over the background but I didn't want to complicate the technique right out the gate so this is the entire card I hope that you guys will give this a try you're inspired to make something um, little colorful thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video bye